I met yeah, I met him in Jerusalem. You met Zorak so Pahavdi. I, I, I was in his house. In Zorak's house. Mm. Yeah, when Mr. Subya came here, we went together with the Pahavdi to the, they wanted to show to the Yad Vashem. And you were there with? Yeah, I went with them. Yeah. Wow. We have picture. I think you have the picture of her, of them walking there. Pahavdik was a. I remember him in Lithuania. Yeah, oh, he really. was a handsome man, I tell you that. He told them all to leave, but they didn't listen. Vahaftik was in this charge of the Mizrahi. Yeah, he was Mizrahi. Mizrahi. And he told him to leave. He told the Rosh Hashiva. He, he ran away from Poland and came to Lithuania. To yeah. And he was among the first to went to the ship Sugiara. coming to Israel. Yeah. He was the one that asked Sugihara for the visas. He was in the... Yeah, he was, a, he was among those who went to Tsugiao. Yeah. Boy, people, people are, 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 um, they want to know the, the exact story of the, how it went, like the Hanukkah party and how you met Sugihara. They want to hear from you the exact uh, maise. Yeah. And you want to hear it? Yeah. Well, it was Hanukkah 1939. It was Lithuania was not in the war yet, but the Germans already invaded Poland, and many Polish Jews were killed already in the beginning. So when he ran across the border, those who were near Lithuania, ran across the border to Lithuania. And many of them came to stay with the Jewish people who received them in their houses. And so did we. We had a, a father and a daughter called Rosenthal. And they received the visa later on, they were saved by Sugya. And what happened was that in Hanukkah, because of the refugees, the ladies came to collect money for the refugees. So on the impulse, I gave all my Hanukkah money to the ladies. You know, I was left without money, I wanted to go to a movie to see a Laurel and Harvey, and I had no money left. So I said, my, my aunt Anushka, she had a shop that was selling to uh, diplomats, and among them was Sugiara. And I walked to her shop to ask for some money, Hanukkah money, I hope that she wouldn't remember that she gave me this <laughs> one. <laughs> and there it was, the girl in the beautiful suit. And I've never seen a Japanese person with slant eyes. Well, I was kind of gawking at them. And my aunt says, don't do, do that, it's not right. So she came over to me and he said, and we, we spoke Russian. We spoke proper Russian together. That's the language they use to communicate. And he said to me, so she brought me some money for Hanukkah money. So he took out some money and he said, here is my contribution. I hear you have a festival called Hanukkah. And I said, well, I can't accept for uh, not my family. So I said, so I'll be your uncle, Japanese uncle for this Hanukkah. He was a funny guy, you know. So I said, if you're my, sort of my impulse, I said, if you're my uncle, come to our Hanukkah party. <laughs> and I said, and my aunt was embarrassed, so I was this <laughs> Japanese ambassador. And the twelve year old boy invites him to a party. It was all very strange, you know, like I think it was meant to be. And then he missed Sugar and he came. 
and the Iraqi, the Shah, also came. He was five years old. He came to our party and uh, got acquainted with our songs and everybody was surprised to see this handsome, uh, well-dressed couple. You remember the song, Sully? Dog Tala needs him, Mundai Sully needs him, and I never learn it, I never learn it. I'm the guy, 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 i yeah, we knew My that it, we used to sing it in our uncle's place. All this, all this Zemiras. Yeah. And Solly, you collected stamps? And Sugihara invited you to the consulate to get Japanese stamps? Yes, yeah. I used to collect stamps. And we learned that part from the consulate in yeah. Kaunas. You've seen the house. Yeah, I've been there. You've been there, yeah. and they live not far from I used to go, I used to come to their house and I would get stamps. I was and, collecting uh, stamps. And Mrs. Sugihara would give me cookies. And stamps. And stamps. And yeah, they. There was a Japanese ambassador who brought me the stamps. Some, I have it here, I think. You have the stamps? He brought me some stamps to show. As a... As a... As a master. As a show of yeah. what to God. My wife knelt there. If he came today, a shrine is held in Kodna. People from all over the world come to see it. And there is Japanese. Yeah. Japanese tourists. Every day there's busloads of Japanese, they come from all the way from Japan to Kovno to, to the consulate. You know that the Japanese... His book in Japanese was in the second edition as a pocket book. Yeah. The book it's is... Not popular. Popular. This book Who is already in the sixth it? edition. Who translated it? This book is in the sixth edition now. This is the... These are the two Japanese books. Mm -hmm. Oh. One's in, um, this is a light one candle. In Japanese. In Japanese. Robertson, I'll, I'll get you a copy. Yeah, it's, it's... That's the this Please, is, thank you. And that's Chinese, no? no Japanese. 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 And Japanese, um, they came from the school. School teachers came. Yeah, you are here. Last month. You can, you are. Yeah, but 25 of them came to yeah, yeah. the instructing on the, on the Holocaust in Japan. So they came to meet me, and they were here sitting all over the place. Very interesting. You know, um, uh, I, I worked for many years in a place called Neve Yerushalayim, in Yerushalayim. It's for girls, women. It's like for Judaic studies, for women that are trying to, whoever wants to come could learn there. And I had a Chinese student, must have been about 10 years ago, 12 years ago, a Chinese student, a convert. And, um, I was talking to her and I told her, I said, you know, my husband was born in China. So she says to me, really? You mean your husband was part of the group that came through Japan to, to Shanghai during the war? I go, yes. She goes, I grew up in China and we learned all about it in our history class as a Chinese girl growing up in China. Yeah. The story was taught as part of the curriculum in the Chinese story system. Yeah, history. Yeah. Uh, because of, I, it took me quite a while to write 
because uh, I wanted to stay away from it. When I came to Israel, yeah, it was I a came with a group of Canadian volunteers. Mm -hmm. So they wrote me down that I was born in Toronto, in, 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 in Canada, mm -hmm. Ottawa, Canada. Mm -hmm. And people thought that I was a Canadian here mm -hmm. when I was in the army. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then my friends who survived came back and said, Stop being a Canadian. <laughs> go back to your roots. You go back to your roots. So it's true that for many years people didn't talk about this. Mm, that's right. Didn't discuss it. It's something that's coming up mm. only over the last several years. For a long time, everybody was healing. It was healing. It was a time for healing. It was actually when the Japanese. So American soldiers came to Jerusalem to look for me in 1992. They wanted to see if some of those that saved us still alive. Really? How did they find you? You weren't in they Jerusalem. Put a, the guy who bought them was called Eric Saul. He was a historian. Yeah. And uh, he put an ad in the papers in Jerusalem Post and looking for me, you know, people who were saved by American and Japanese soldiers. So I went to up to Jerusalem, Dover, it's some fruit. and I met up with them. And there was the guy who saved me. These are good. So I have not some more. You have you can really. It was quite an emotional, emotional meeting. <laughs> I don't know what he said. No, it's all good. You know what we heard? Say that said. before you met, you never could cry after That's and then right. the first time you could cry. Yeah. When you met him, you cried. They all, all the Japanese guys cried. <laughs> all oh, the soldiers. Yeah. The yeah. Sorry. Yeah. What what exactly happened in that Hanukkah party that changed mm -hmm. the whole course of history? What exactly happened over there? Where? In the in the Hanukkah party. They came to ask him. Uh, no, to yeah, ask but in the Hanukkah party, what 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 happened well, that became so? Well, so yeah, actually wanted to he wanted to get here and just moved from Finland. From Finland. He was, he was in Finland, so yeah, and he moved to Kaunas because he was also an intelligence officer. Yeah, he, he was, was observing he the was, Russian movements. Those, not only the Russians, the Germans on one side. Was Russian. The Germans on one side, Poles and the, and, and the Russians. And he also had Polish spies who worked for him. People don't know about it. Polish spies? Yeah, yeah Polish guy officers who were in Poland, conquered by the Germans. Yeah. But they were reporting to Sugiara what's going on with in the Poland. In Poland? Really? Yeah. That's why he advised my father to to leave. To leave. To leave. He knew what was going on. His father wanted to sell the business. Right. No, my father didn't sell the business. Left. Left. Just left. Just left. But but so Paula, so your so your so father's so brother so remained. Your father's the one brother remained in in Poland. My yeah. mother, my mother's brother. Yeah, your mother's My brother. father's whole family died. Yeah. Oh. Where is it this one? So here we have also, this is wonderful, this is three yeah. with Zachor and... Um, this, this actually, this is the reason why I wrote the book, The Children. Because I promised them if I survive, I will tell the world it's their story. And that's in the uh, Holocaust Education Week in, in uh, Toronto. Those are the children. Uh -huh. yeah. And unfortunately they didn't survive. Wow. They didn't survive. No, they were too small. It is something. And you see, this is part of the... This is in German. Flucht in die Welt. Flucht in die Welt. That's my, my story there too. Yeah. Yeah.
And today in the news, the Germans said that they shouldn't come to Israel. In the, in the news today? Yeah. Why? Because of because the event? Because it's dangerous. Because it's dangerous. They only have us in May. Not mm -hmm. the Germans, the British. English. The English. English. The British. She was British? Yeah, she was British, yeah. not uh, the British. Yeah. That's all up in Vancouver. The Germans would say the same. It's cool. And sorry, how was it like meeting the German Chancellor when you met the German Chancellor? Which Chancellor? In Germany, you met the German Chancellor? The President. The President. Wait, yeah. What was his name? His name. Well, two presidents actually who became patterns of my book. Wow. And uh, that's why the, uh, the book is so well known in Germany because they went to all the schools. You see, this book is now in the sixth edition. Sixth edition? Yeah. But you don't read German. No. But it's very, uh, very important for the Germans. Definitely. It was very important. The children in of Germany. the third generation. Yeah. When I told them what was going on, they couldn't believe it, and nobody told them. You see. Till a year, two years ago, Sonny and I were every year there, and he was going to schools and high school and, and talking. Speaking. Yeah. And now only one friend left. He was in Jerusalem, writing the Messiah. Yeah. I did my part. I kept you my, did a major part. I kept my promise for the children. A major part. It took me time to do it. My husband is because of you. It's my hard. husband and his family survived because of you. It's hard to believe. Wow. You know. Yes. That's so emotional. Yeah. Well, really? Of course, of course. And that's the more. No um, doubt, no doubt. What's the name? My grandson. In the army, he was in the army. And the granddaughter is in the university. You should have a lot, a lot, a lot of nachas from all of your. Langi gesunte Johan, that's why. Langi gesunte Johan. <laughs> and he is Sully's best friend. He is still alive, he's the same year, and he was in the same year. And that's his no granddaughter. Abba Nao, Nolad, the 1928 Belita, Imha and who's yeah. this? Another one? Yeah. That's in Jerusalem. In, uh, in Yad Vashem. Yad Vashem. Yeah. It was in Idiot. They invited me, but and I couldn't. And Sorry go. was going with him, and he went to school and Sorry to university. Every year we are in Germany. Yeah. So this is what. Chaiti, my sister-in-law, does sorry. today in Chicago. She's invited to speak about Shanghai mm. and the surviving, the survival of the Jews in Shanghai as a result of Shukihara and the whole story. There's and she always mentions you too. Yeah. There's somebody who was very rich in Chicago was saved by... Melamed. 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 A huge family. Leo Melamed, yes. Somebody she has said. met him. And there's another, there's a foundation. It's the Spungen Foundation. They, they do a lot yeah. for memorializing Shanghai experience among, in the, in the mm. world today, in America. Somebody called Fishman, no? What's the name? Fishman. Fischoff, Fischoff. No, that's not in uh, Chicago, no. No, Fischoff, a very rich man. Fischoff, it's one person. But, but you know, you know Fischoff? I have, yes. Uh, uh, we saw him in, uh, in the Wiesenthal Center once. In Wiesenthal Center, correct. Yeah. You know, there was a big ceremony of all the descendants of the Shanghai Jews 
in honor of uh, Mr. Shugihara in New York City. Yeah, it was I, written up in the New York Times. I was there. You were there. I spoke there. You did. It was, I remember, it was a stormy night. Really? It was uh, raining cats and dogs. Mr. Yeah. Shugihara Harry, Harry was there or just his she wife? She was there. His wife? His wife. He wasn't alive anymore, I think. He wasn't alive. Right. It was in New York in the town hall. Right. Sorry. Marisha Zupnik. Zupnik. That was very strong. Zupnik was in there. He was working for us in Vienna. And good, good, good. The, the German um, uh, secretary. Uh, secretary assistant. Yeah. So it was very interesting. I just realized his name was something Gudz, G-U-D-Z-E, yeah. in New Jersey, in Lakewood, New Jersey, there is a street, it's a religious community, it's a big yeshiva in big Lakewood, in the world. one of the biggest yeshivas in the world, and they have a whole city that they're all religious Jews yeah. living there, and there's one street, Gudz Court. G U D Z E. I never knew who, what it's named for, until I read it in the, in the book again. I realized oh, maybe that is connected. Yeah, yeah. He was killed at the end. Of the he was killed at the he end. Was killed. They, they, they took him. The, the German army mm -hmm. took him back to the army, and he was killed in Russia. Mm -hmm. Of He said, he doesn't hate you. Yeah. He was doing what he had to do in the army, but he doesn't yeah, well, uh, He helped write all those visas. Yeah, with with Moshe Zupnik, they did it together. Yeah, yeah. they sat yeah. together. Yeah, the men in Denmark who saved all the Jewish community. In Denmark or in... Denmark, he was a German representative. In Denmark. With a, with a swastika. And, and he, he said... Uh, he told the chief of police and in, the, in Copenhagen, mm -hmm. that they're going to collect all the Jews. So the chief of police warned the Jews, and I met the guy, actually the officer, a Danish officer living in San Francisco. I met him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had his picture. Yeah, the picture. He helped, they helped to take the Jews on boats, really? fishing boats. Really? Uh, uh, really, all these Sweden. untold stories. I recently, not too long ago, read a very interesting article who was in the English media that the country was one country that did not cooperate at all with the Germans and refused to give over lists of the Ger of the Jewish citizens. Albania. Yeah, Albania. It's true. Albania. Albania. Bulgaria too. Really. Yeah. And they say in Portugal and Spain also. also. Yeah. The, the Rebbe went through, through Lisbon. The Rebbe you know, of Lubavitch. In Poland, um, in Landshut, Landshut, in the town of Poland, it's right near where uh, Rebbe Elimelech of Lejewski is buried. Right there. So there's a beautiful estate that the aristocratic family of the Gerd Sebek, Abram ben Abram, mm -hmm. was a dis... Yeah. What, what's the name? Potatsky, right. He's the buried next Potosky. to the Gra. He's very... He's buried next to the I was the at the Kiva in, right? in Vilna. So his yeah. family was from Poland, an aristocratic family from Lansut, and there was a huge estate. Um, when the Germans invaded Poland and they wanted to round up the Jews from Lansut, the um, his grandson or whoever it is that lived in that estate at the time refused to cooperate and refused to hand over the Jews. He protected it's them. Amazing. It's the only place I think in Poland. Yeah, there were some Sadiki. But not too many. Not too many. Look what we got saved because a German took over the Polish embassy and we didn't have passports to go to Italy. For money, he gave us passports. And that's how we could leave Poland. Right. 
and now the gods don't get them. But My father, when he was liberated, he was at the end of his strength. He fainted right after the liberation. Fainted. Who revived him? A German woman. A German woman who saw him came over, gave him something to drink and something to eat, and revived him. It's written in the book. Here. But the German lost, killed him. The, the, the oh, really? German killed the young that gave that him the you. He fulfilled his mission, that's it. He did what he did. Mm. And Sully Kanas, you, when you did the book, the book uh, launch with Mrs. Sugihara, mm -hmm. when she had her book at Barnes & Noble, can you tell us a bit about it? That you did a book together with Mrs. Sugihara? Yeah, we have a book. We one, yeah, we were with Hiroki, uh, the son. With Hiroki? We went around together to give lectures on my book, and he yeah. gave lectures on uh, his mother, this one. Visas for life. And Visas for life. And it was at Barnes and Noble. It was sold at Barnes we and Noble. We have a copy of this with her with her signature in it, a signed I copy of have, this. Yeah, I have it somewhere. It's, it, he it has has another son in this. Uh, in Belgium. In yeah. Belgium. Yeah. In Belgium. Yeah. And Sully, did you know um, the Dutch uh, Zwartendijk? Could be, a, could be. A. No, but there was a young Zwartendijk who gave the visas no, the, for he Curacao. Was a diplomat. He was a Dutch diplomat. The, the, the Dutch diplomat who gave the visas for Curacao. Yeah. Did you ever meet him? Sure. He was. He should get a lot of credit too. Yes, he did. Because uh, without him, there wouldn't be any visa. It was him and the Decker in, uh, in because Riga. Because he gave and visas. He and had the uh, visas to go to Carousel. Even though Carousel did not yeah. need visa yeah. to get into Carousel. He gave. The he gave couldn't give visas, he could only give transit visas. Mm. And the Dutch gave the entry yeah, visas. Yeah, the end visa. There was uh, Jans Wattendijk also. But I, I read that Carousel did not need visas to enter. They yeah. needed the governor had to give permission. He had to give permission. And the governor yeah. would have to give permission, otherwise he couldn't go. And what was the reason that they didn't continue on to Curacao? They never intended to go there. They never intended. Just and to you get know, out. you know, I read um, it was Zorak Bahatik actually met with the governor of Curacao, and he said, "If we would have come to your island, would you have allowed us in?" And he said, "Definitely not." Not. No. You were in Curacao years yeah. ago visiting, but really, he wouldn't have. Left he wouldn't have. Oh. Yeah. But even though it's a ju Dutch colony, and the Dutch yeah. would have. The governor said yeah, I wouldn't have allowed, and he said I wouldn't have allowed. It's amazing. I think he changed something. It was Zorak Fahatik said you must leave out the sentence that you yeah. need the permission of the the governor, that's right. and he left right. it out. You left it out. That's this is a detail that nobody. Knows. This is Zorak. Uh, this is uh, Jan Zwartendijk. The Dutchman, the Dutchman. Yeah. left out that pasuk, yeah. which is up to the governor. Because also the Decker, he was the ambassador in Riga. What was the name? The Decker. He was the ambassador in Riga. That they asked, they first asked him, and he said, "You don't need visas." It was Goodrich, and uh, Nathan Goodrich. He Good asked. Trip. Good he trip. he had a, a Polish wife, and so they wanted to know. What did he know. say? What did he, he say? He said, "You don't need visas to go to um, Carousel. Yeah, you don't right. Need. But you do need the permission of the governor." And they say Zorak Bahaptik was the one that said, you must ask him to leave it out, that, that sentence. And uh, he asked, they went to um, Jans Wartendijk and he did it, he actually did it. There are so many yeah, pieces of this. Puzzle. Yeah, he was uh, amazing because he was so also such an incredible person. He actually was a uh, representative of Philips. He was, yeah, he was, uh, yeah that's what what was he? he was a representative of Philips. Philips Electric Company. He was like an honorary oh. consul in oh, really? in in, in uh, he wasn't an official No, he was, he was a representative of no, Philips. The, the Dutch consul left because the, the Holland was already conquered. Mm -hmm. So he took over the, whatever the, the consul gave him, and he was a representing the Holland. Which was already I saw, I saw. Yeah. At Kirat Noah, they made a memorial for, for uh, Jans Wattendijk. Yeah. 
And they had his sand cam. It, it's a big thing. They made a memorial. Yeah. We believe should go soon. This is amazing. R Rav and yeah, Riverton, what, what can we say to... The only thing you can say is that I want this film. <laughs> oh, that's for the greatest pleasure. But, Sonny, how does it feel knowing that what you did saved... Uh, you have somebody here that your actions saved, uh, saved yeah, the, our yeah. great Rav. Yeah. And, 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 and thousands of others. And, and he's a rabbi of thousands of students all around the world. Yeah. Oh. Thousands. He's the I'm the Oh, it's beautiful. The, 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 the Mary Yeshiva is the biggest yeshiva in the world nowadays. My husband yeah. studied in the Mary Yeshiva for many years Where here in Yerushalayim. Broken? No, in Yerushalayim. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. The Rosh Yeshiva of the Mary Yeshiva from Shanghai was a very yeah. close friend of my husband's father. And my husband was a student of his. And what should we say? We went back to Shanghai a few years ago. Really? We had a, a reunion. Government de de delegation. Thank you, thank you, delegation. Yeah, that's our history. I became son <laughs> because of some stupid invitation. I became <laughs> Look at that, you never know. No, you did kiss it. It was a. Uh, it was, a, it was uh, amazing. I talk about it every year. Right. In the classes to his, my husband's on Hanukkah, student I on Hanukkah. A small thing to do. About the, another miracle of Hanukkah. That's right. Another miracle of Hanukkah. Yeah. You mentioned it to the boys. I read Not 2,000 years ago. I write it in, in my Facebook. Oh yeah? <laughs> I don't know how to do Facebook. It's amazing. When 90 I was years eight years old, what? when I was eight years old, I got my citizenship in you know, American. Yeah. My mother sent me to school and after school I went to the court. With your father? I don't care, two million people. Keep yourself clean. Don't play. You have to go to the court. Be clean. I promise you, your picture will be in all the papers. Yeah. She said it's like an American way of persuasion. Mm -hmm. But the next day, the neighbor called Reverend Walken, buy the New York Times. Mm -hmm. You'll see a picture of your son. Front page. Eight years old, yeah. Mm -hmm. Signing citizenship papers. There happened to be a photographer there and took a yeah. picture of your father and you. Signing the citizenship, and it says Chaim Walken with his father, Rabbi Shmuel Walken, Samuel Walken, born in China, signing his citizenship. Chaim now him. lived in Brooklyn. The name is Walken. 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 Walken with an L. With an L. Balkin. 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 Because I have somebody called Balkin on my Facebook writing to me. Balkin? Barking. Not Barking. Barking. And, uh, and Rav, you mentioned um, that the, the, the whole nace of the mirror, okay. you showed that it's, it was written that the nace of the mirror is some, comparable to, to Purim. To Purim. Purim. More, more than Purim. More, more than miracles in Shanghai than the one in Purim. Mm. Yes, you know there is a picture I want to show them. It's on the table my hand. Okay. No, no, okay. You know it's in a in a envelope. White envelope. Yeah, yeah. the yeah. I mean these are the stamps we showed you from Mozambique that I came to study. This is can you believe the stamps of Sugihara from Mozambique? So do you keep the stamps? I'm so yeah. <laughs> from Mozambique, from Mozambique to do stamps of Sugihara for the Magandovet. Guess who that is? You? Akhatavich. Akhatavasheva. My father was in the Haganah here. Yeah. 
So you said it was it was harder to go to Lithuania than it was to, to Germany. Germany. Yeah. One second. Okay. These are my friends. So, it's amazing. But they're all dead now. And this is what I wanted to tell you about Kalfarin. What about it? Look what I did in Kalfarin. Put up the flag. Sally, if we can. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. That's special. You know, when I said to the Germans, Hitler made us wear the Maganda Beat as a symbol of shame, and now I'm putting it up as a symbol of pride. Right. And the German newspapers wrote it. Very good. Sure. Sally, thank you so much. Sally, who is in the picture? My friend David Granat. He's right after the liberation. Wow. <laughs> That's my father. Who is it? My father. In the Bolshevik Revolution. So. Your father? My father. In the revolution, in the Russian Revolution. Sorry. Deborah, I can't speak now. I'm sorry. Sorry, these were the... And here's a picture of okay. the girl. Okay. And my okay. picture of the captain. Yes, pretty well. Okay. You see or no? Okay, bye. Thank you. And here's a picture of me in the American Army. You were in the American Army too? In Germany. Oh, in Germany? After the war, yeah. I was drafted into the American army because I knew English and languages. Really? And so you knew English already before the war? I landed in the ghetto. In the ghetto? Yeah. English? With a woman from London. Really? Yeah. So, sorry, which army? You were in the, the Israeli army and the, the American army? What is your first name? Paula. Paula. This is a Nina? picture. That's of me in, uh, in Syria. On the border. On the border. See the, the machine gun. Look at the machine gun. That's a German machine gun. Where? Yeah. It had a swastika on it. It had a swastika on it. It had a swastika. Every time I looked, I was shooting at the arrow. Where did you see that? What is that? Where was this? This was on the Syrian, Syrian border. border. When? This was in 1948. Sorry, you actually came here. Your father had a visa to go to Canada and you decided to come here. Come here, yeah. Really? Yeah, just be in America now. Paulie, your husband was a very handsome man. Still, he's very handsome. Still, he's. This was after the war. Wow, this is the famous picture that is in. This is the famous picture that is in. Uh, this is in Yeah. Yeah. 
And suddenly, would you have thought one day that there'd be stamps made in Lithuania of Sugihara? Yeah. And that you'd be from Mozambique and Somali then. It's unbelievable, Somali. Here's the stamps from Somali. It's for you have one of these. But from Mozambique, it's unbelievable. Unless this may be, this is from Berlin. Ah, oh, that was from Berlin. You know, they have the biggest Holocaust center in the world is in Berlin. And they invited you, that was... They invited me to speak there. Wow. It's unbelievable. Yeah, history. And how do you feel today is Yom Yerushalayim? It's not Yom Yerushalayim. Do you think the miracle? Hallelujah. It's a miracle. There's so many yeah. miracles. We. Well, you are amazing. <laughs> when I came here in '48, there were only 600,000 Jews. Yeah. Only 600,000 of us. Today, Baruch Hashem, we are already six billion. So it's more than six million. The more they're yeah. attacking us, the more we are grown. Baruch Hashem. Baruch Hashem. Sally and Mrs. Penina, I want you to have this book. Um, and you know that for me it's very hard to read my own father's writings, but it's my father wrote his memoirs from the day the war broke out until the day of his liberation. Mm -hmm. He wrote it when I was a child. This was in the 50s, the 1950s. And then he locked it in his desk drawer. Nobody knew about it. And we found the writings, his manuscript papers like this, after he passed away in 2004. So when did you have it published? So my youngest son um, worked on publishing this for the past seven years. He did research. He wanted to make sure that all the facts were accurate. And he put in pictures, worked on it. And he presented it to us on our 50th wedding anniversary, this Hanukkah. He presented it to us. And it just was just published a few months ago. And um, the Kalfarin connection here. What language did you write? Hebrew. In Hebrew? He came from Poland after the war, after all the camps, he came to Eretz Israel. My mother's family came here before the war. They got married here. Mm -hmm. And I was born here. And, and then my parents father? moved to America. Oh. And we moved to America and I grew up there. I see. So I think you will find. Um, some connection sure. to the experiences that he had, yeah. and um, it's a, the, we all have to share our story here because yeah, it's right. all a different part of of the survival. Another one, this one is from Air. I don't know if there's air up there. It's very humid in Ramat Hashem. Yerushalayim was so cold, I came with a jacket. I'm also going to... Which picture is this? That's the guy who saved my life. Probably your father too. Who is this? He's the American Japanese soldier. Who dug us up. I don't see that he's Japanese in this picture. It's hard to see. It's a little blurry. Matsamura. It's enlarged, that's it's why enlarged. it's so enlarged. Matsamura. And he's the one that dug you from the snow. Mm -hmm. When you were in the death march. Right. That's in Munich in 1945. He was already buried. It's snow. not far from Innsbruck, Munich, you not know far. that. No. It was there. It's on the same road. Yeah. We went to, when we were in Austria, 
we we went to the place where my father was the fight where he was um, liberated and we we went uh, along the the same path that he went it was very touching you know he he described in the book a certain um machanet um army camp oh, it's still there it's still there oh uh, what is this your parents this is my parents Beautiful couple. Yeah. I would what go. Hitler did. What he did. Yeah, he was a What he did. He died early. Seventy something. Sorry. But we just wanted to understand in the in the Hanukkah party. He wanted to know from, um, like, first count, he wanted to know from the people what was happening in, in Poland. That's what, uh, that's how it... Your guests who were refugees. Rosenthal. Yeah, Rosenthal. Yeah. They talked about their, what, what they... Their experiences. And, yeah. he, and he was so that's listening. Why he, wa he, he was, was listening. That's why. No, he wanted to hear from local people. He just came from Finland and... Uh, then it was the first acquaintance with the Jewish people all together. All together. Yeah. No, he knew Jewish people when he was studying Russian in, in uh, it was Af not Afghanistan. It was, he was in, um, it was part of Ch uh, China that was... Yes, uh, China. Harbin. 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 There was Harbin. Harbin. Yeah. occupied by Japan. There were, there were yeah. Jews yeah. there. Yeah. But you know, interestingly, in Harbin, they did not know about the war. It did not touch them, the Second World War. No, nothing. It's interesting. So, so, so he wanted to hear from them what was happening. So he wanted to hear. And it was the first time that... The Rosenthal told them. But he already knew about what he was telling. Because he oh, heard from his spies. His spies. Yeah, he was. His son told me that there was actually an intelligence officer. Mm -hmm. He actually said uh, Polish, Polish as well. He gave lots of visas for Polish. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's not. He, it's not well known, but he did. So, so, so he was Polish Polish from where? Like where? the resistance. So How did he them. do that? Where did they come to him? How did they find there's, him? There's something that you people may not know, but he was instrumental to get the uh, visas going to Russia. Because he spoke yeah. Russian. Yeah. He spoke Russian and he was in contact with the Russian uh, consul. Right, and he told the Russian consul, I read, read yeah. this in the book that you gave us, he, he asked him to please allow, make an allowance to allow the Jews to go through no, Russia. No, he bribed him. He bribed him. There was some money from the Jewish, American Jewish committee. Really? Yeah. So Shugihara had arranged with him to allow the Jews, the Jews to, go to go through. to Russia. That was the main oh. point. Damn it. Otherwise, the visa people couldn't use the visa. Yeah. We're talking about going to, from Lithuania to Vladivostok. Yeah. That's uh, two, two weeks. Two weeks on the train. Yeah. yeah. I mean, my sister-in-law remembers it. Yeah. She remembers was, the two-week trip on the train. It was a real tzaddik. In Sugihara. Sugihara. Not only gave visas, but he also helped to get a passage to Russia. Mm -hmm. But it seems that after the war, he had no idea if his visas really saved anybody. Yeah. He didn't know if they if they were used at all. That's right. Mrs. Sugihara continued later, and he came to New York, and they made a big reception. Right. Yes, so, you were uh, you talking about it? Yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. We said it. And you know, there we was knew about it. We knew so my parent, my husband's family. My husband's father was a Rav before the war in Poland. Yeah. And then in Shanghai, he 
how many there were families, there were many single boys from the yeshiva, and their house was like the meeting place. They would always come to my in-laws, and they would be their parents, surrogate parents during the war. And after the war, their house continued to be the center for many of the survivors from Shanghai who were in New York. My, he had a shul, my father-in-law. He was a rab, he had a whole community. And their house was the center meeting point of all the Shanghaiers, Shang, the Shanghaiers yeah. in their home. And they were always, it was family. It was, it was family. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm thinking that if Sugiha, that he was a Japanese consul, knew what was happening to the Jews in Poland because he had spies, so it means that a lot of other consuls of different other countries knew the same because they also were spying for their countries sure. and they did nothing. They did nothing. Yeah. That means all the countries knew about it. They knew exactly what was happening yeah. because they all had people. They all yeah. know what's going on behind the lines. That's right. Yeah. And they did nothing. And he, he was, he was such a foreigner to him. This whole thing was foreign. Jews. You know? yeah, yeah, he knew nothing about them. Mm. Yeah. Um, this, the story of the uh, Japanese commissioner in Kobe is well known. He wanted to talk to the Jews and get to know them. And there was a delegation that came to speak with him. He ordered them to come. One of the big rebbers, Amshin of a Rebbe, and another rabbi, Rabbi Moshe Chatskis, and Dr. Avraham Kachuzi, who was the convert, a Japanese professor who converted to Judaism, mm -hmm. and the commissioner asked the Rebbe, why do the Germans hate the Jews? Yeah. What did he say? I'm sure you know. What did he say? He goes, they hate the Jews because we're Asians. Yeah. And that really got them scared. The group is in the United States, and then they said, how do you know it's true? And the Amshan of Arabi was so, he was such a, a worldly person. He said he had read that there was a diplomat that wanted to marry a Japanese, a German diplomat that wanted to marry a, a Japanese, and he couldn't get a marriage certificate because they in said Germany. she was, she was inferior. Right. And yeah. that, because And that was, really <laughs> opened their eyes. And they said you can stay in Kobe. Actually, it was Eichmann demanded the Jews back from Kobe. Right. And uh, the Japanese, this is where I must say it's in their favor, that's why they send it to, the to Jews Shanghai. to Shanghai. Right. Well, he, he, he demanded that they come back. They wanted, they were allies. Yeah, I know, they were allies. So he wanted them back to Europe you know, to go. He wanted them to send, take them back to Germany. There's a book. Said, you are our allies, send us back to the Jews. There are two books that talk about this. One of them is the Fuju Plan. Yeah. <coughs> Dr. Mar Ra Ra Rabbi Marvin Tokea, my yeah. sister-in-law, just met with him last week. <laughs> in he, was, he was in Tokyo for many he years. He was a rabbi, rabbi in Tokyo, oh, and he, he found these papers in the attic of the shul. Oh, oh is he? Oh, is, is he? Yeah, he's fine. And... Um, I met him. You did? Yeah. So there was a plan, a Japanese we call it Tochnit Megira, what to do with the Jews. And there was a plan to have all the, tell all the Jews that they're going to bring them to a different place and put them all on boats and sink the boats in the middle of the ocean as though solving their Jewish problem. But the plan became known and the Jews made a big uh, deal about it. It seemed that one, somebody overheard uh, a Japanese talking, or somebody talking to somebody else in a bar and telling them tomorrow there won't be any more Jews here or something. Well, it's going to be the whole tour. This was written in Marvin yeah. Tokayer's They book. also wanted to have gas, ch gas chambers in, in Shanghai, that I didn't near hear. the very end. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's what Moshe's brother told me. His brother? Yeah, Moshe told me that after in Shanghai they had they have a um, cash table that they wanted to use for the Jews. Yeah. So, sorry, this is also, what is... Um, ah, that was uh, a theater. 
edition of my book in, in, in Japan. In Japan? Yeah. Have you ever been to Japan? Yeah. 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 Quite a few times. They invited me. Um, Where are you? The, the candle. There you go. The candle. Light the candle. Light the candle. That was the Japanese theater. They made a theater. It was good, pretty good. From the from the book. From the book, yeah. That's from the light the candle. Corner. When did you start, Sally, to tell your story? At what point did you begin? What was the catalyst that made you start well, telling your story? I was, I really was violent that I didn't. I keep my promise to the church. Okay. Okay. So when was it? What point? <laughs> actually, I was writing over the time. Oh, yes? I kept a diary. From where? At what point? In the ghetto. In the ghetto. But I didn't think of publishing it. And you had it? You were able to hold on to it all the time? No, when we came to a ghetto, a concentration camp in well, Germany, I had to draw it away. Uh, it's the story of German. my Eric so. Yeah. But then the Japanese guys who came, the American Japanese came to Jerusalem mm -hmm. to meet me. Mm -hmm. They sort of gave me a push too. I see. There was a documentary film that was produced that they interviewed you also, which I saw. It was on Shugihara. Uh, PBS, PBS. It was when the Conspiracy, Conspiracy of Kindness. Yes. Yes. I remember the interview. And Martin Gilbert also did one yeah, on I the. I gave it to you. I, I made you a copy, Sunny, yeah, and, yeah. on a DVD. And Martin Gilbert also made a documentary on the Kovna yeah, Ghetto. On the Kovna Ghetto. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I met him. Met the Ninth Fourth. Ninth Fourth. Wow. What a terrible. Right about the ghetto. It's when you go there and you think 30,000 okay, years. I was there, we were there, you and a half Do you ago. remember the, the, uh, um, the um, funeral of the Dvar Avram, of the Kovnerov? She had a funeral of Shapira, he had a big funeral in the ghetto. Yeah. You remember it? I know, he was a friend of my father's. Because he, 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 was, he was Nifter in the ghetto. Yes, he was in the ghetto. Uh, actually, I remember there was a question, the, the Germans called us to uh, make a segregation. We call it the uh, sent 10,000 sent to the ninth floor. So the Jewish uh, representatives were talking to Rav Shapiro about what to do. So Rav Shapiro told them, if you Rise up, all, everybody got to be killed. Not to do that. Not to do that. Yeah, that's what I remember about the Abshapino. You have a beautiful, you set a beautiful table. Thank you. But you didn't eat it. It was just too, it's so beautiful to look at. You have beautiful <laughs> dishes. You. But that's setting. not for looking, that's for eating. Beautiful. Come on, have some fruit. You can peel it, you can do what you want. And, and these paintings you painted? Yeah. I, I painted them. Very one. talented. You can do any, you want, whatever you say. I you made this menorah. Oh, let's I bring it. it. From <laughs> what? From what? The menorah. What is it made from? Wow. There's what is the it's material it's made from? It's from. It's, 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 uh, it's made from what? Clay. Made from clay. Clay. Sure. A menorah. A Hanukkah story. An extension wow. of a Hanukkah story. Wow. That I did in San Diego. Here's the menorah. Wow, it's beautiful. Sunny, it really is. It's a bit different. So Sadi Kanaz, will you look at that book, A Passage to Freedom? And inside they tell the story of the little boy that um, 
that invited uh, Sugihara for... Okay. Rubinson, could you maybe just read the first page? I think it's, it's really so amazing. <coughs> this is what, um, a copy of what you gave us yeah, too. But the very first page. There is a saying that the eyes tell everything about a person. At a store, my father saw a young Jewish boy who didn't have enough money to buy what he wanted. So my father gave the boy some of his. That boy looked into my father's eyes and to thank him, invited my father to his home. That is when my family and I went to a Hanukkah celebration for the first time. I was five years old. Sorry, and that's you. That's, that's unbelievable. Yeah. And this, this, was, this has been written in, in Japanese, and this is a translation. Did you see this yeah. one? Good. Yeah, he brought it back. What is this? Sorry, no. Lager. Lager Kultur? That's the Kaufling Lager. They made a... A Kaufling Lager? This is... Kaufling. Kultur Werkstatt Soligano. The Germans made a cultural... Werkstatt? What does that mean? That's uh, a place where the children are learning. This is in German. This is in German. And they made it in my name. What is this a picture of? That's a picture of the camp everywhere. Ripson, can you turn it around? Maybe there's some pictures from California, I'm not sure. Yeah. And then Sadi over here. Achlata shel Ahava, Sikoro shel El Shiyune Sugihara, diplomat Yelid Yauchu. And this is the memorial. You were at the, you were at the memorial. Yes, sure. Which this memorial? Is, this is uh, for Sugihara in, in Japan. Yeah. Wow. Mrs. Sugihara invited us. And you sat next to her? Sat next to her. She moved in the set next to her. You know, this she had history. a lot to this do with it. Yeah. She oh. had a lot to she do with it. She should also have maybe have been Chesidei yeah, Matola. Yeah, sure. Because she encouraged her husband also to Absolutely. do the visa. Absolutely. Yeah. Without her encouragement. This is the famous picture yeah. that the sister took. The sister, from the window. From the window. Um, Yukika's sister took the picture of the Yidin outside, the yeah. consulate. Yeah. And this is when the Israeli government, did, they did a very nice thing, when he didn't have, they came to him and they said we want to pay you and he said I didn't do it for money, I didn't do it to get a reward and then they gave the son, the youngest son, a bursary at Hebrew Bookie. University, Bookie. Bookie. he got a, a bursary. A the Israeli government granted a bursary to the youngest son, a bursary? What's um, a bursary? that he didn't have to pay anything. In the, in the oh really? Yeah, so at the, the Israeli university. government mm -hmm. gave it and he studied at Hebrew University. Hebrew University in Yerushalayim. Wow, in Berlin, 1940, Bereka Nira Shah Brandenburg. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
We really have to go. No. You're, you're keeping slim. Well, Try to. Well, the honor to have you. Thank you. We have to. We still have a bar mitzvah here in Hamat Hashem. Oh, that's So we know. We know. We we're gonna. Rebetzin, I just want to say one thing. What you said about your husband, that he is sitting here, thanks to what exactly. Sally did, that is, that is, In a is there's just no words to describe, because that's, yeah. that's the MS, it really is. In a nutshell, yeah. It's yeah. such a squirt, it really is. Yeah. Sure. That's so true. I just want to thank you for your valuable time, for always opening your home, and um, true, uh, what can we say, Robertson? These are the you true are heroes very, of Israel. Very, very, very special. Precious yeah. people. We love Israel. Should just be gesund with all Hashem's blessings. And I'm glad I did my part. He's supposed to write my book yet, but he has okay, time. Okay, okay, you could start. He's yeah. so busy on the Facebook all the time. He's right every night. He's writing till four. I said, you know, I just want to mention one thing. So you wrote on Facebook, Behisha yeah. Amda. Yeah. Um, do you want to just say a little bit what you wrote? It was very special what you wrote about Behisha Amda. Yeah. I wrote the Baruch when I wrote it. I don't remember. It was Behisha Amda. So you wrote on Facebook, and you said, if only we had. I stayed 10 years before, my mother and my brother would have been alive. Yeah. But and look, and we survived. Yeah. And, and yeah. we can see, we see the results. We see your husband survived and, and yeah. Torah has flourished. Yeah, it's very special. Yeah. And the Torah has flourished as a result yeah. of Shanghai and Shukunara. Because yeah. everything was destroyed in the war, all the yeshivas and all the people were murdered in this. Yeah. Torah was officially destroyed, and this seed of Torah that preserved, yeah. that was preserved in Shanghai in its entirety, the yeshiva, was actually held on to the Torah and was then. The whole world's Torah today is as a result of that. You know, I remember in New York, when we were with Mrs. Regan at the time, there's a little boy came up with flowers. He said, Mrs. Regan, I was sitting next to her. Here are some flowers, and I'm alive because of you, husband. And now there's 40,000 of us alive because of you. That, that is correct. And, and every year it gets more. Every year it gets more. Thank you so, so much. It's unbelievable what how things that she's from Poland. My family and I too. Also from Lodge. Yeah, and Lodge. And we sit here together. Right. This shidduch would never happen before the no. war. No. <laughs> never. No, Mudge and, and, and Lita would have never met. Yeah. <laughs> and all thanks to him. No, 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 not at all, not at all. I mean, he has energy. I'm, I'm saying my wife. My wife, she encourages me tremendously. She sends her love. <laughs> but thank you so, so much. He can walk for. Almost a year and a half, we didn't leave the house. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I broke my shin bone. It was good on the So I had an operation, I was in difficulty walking. But, I, but next, you'll recover not, completely. On the 18th, it's his birthday. When? 18 of May. 18 of May. It's soon, it's soon. I'm, I'm writing on the Facebook that May is the most important month of my life. Because I was born in May. And you were liberated. I was liberated on the 2nd of May. And Hitler was buried. And the Germans capitulated, collapsed on the 8th of May. Right. So these are three most important Exactly. Events. My father was also liberated, obviously, in May. Yeah. 
Second of May. Right? I don't know which day in May. It was Lakba Omer, he writes. It was Lakba Omer, but I don't know what day it was in May. Yeah. So next next week we make him a birthday. Beautiful. Lakba Omer also had something to do with it. What? And my daughter. I was a soldier in uh, that captured back the tomb of Rabbi Yachan and Mary Yachai in. You in can. Iran. Wow. You saw the picture of me in the Khadiba Shema. Yeah. We, we captured yeah. back the tomb. Wow. And we all that all, is coming full circle. Sure. I almost this, got killed. This I this had a bullet that passed my eyes. I really? I couldn't see for a few minutes. I was sitting, I thought I'm blind. Really? Yeah, the Arab shot at me when we were trying to capture the, the tomb. Um, Unbelievable. Yeah. Let me see where my husband is. Thank you so, so much. This beautiful apartment. Thank you, so much. Beautiful. So lichtig. Oh. Look at this. <laughs> my husband's staying here. <laughs> He's enjoying the... Yeah. the Paula and Sadi, thank you very, very much. You're welcome. I'm going to go to the hospital. They grew up on it. What do you mean? No, it's a, really? It's a Yiddish. They grew up on it. They spoke Yiddish at home. Yeah, but they said there's a Litvish. Litvish. No, no, no. Litvish. Litvish. You're sure. I know. Litvish. Because I speak like him too. Yeah, yeah. We speak the same language. <laughs> <laughs> it's a yeah. pleasure. Uh, sorry. People who have changed the course of this thing. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it just happened at the right time in the right place. That's, that's what history is all about. We can give him zchut on the day of the Kai. Okay, come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have a good night. Thank you. We made you such a balagan. It was a pleasure. You have help in the house? Yes. You have everything you Okay. Yeah. Telephone yeah. glasses. I telephone. I have. I. That's it. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Sally, thank you so much. Thank you, Sally. If you're in Yerushalayim, we'd love to see you. Yeah. 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 So don't forget to send it to this and show it to you. Oh, pleasure, pleasure. Hey, Angel, I'm wrong, you don't think it. I'm such a nice man. We're waiting for you. We're doing it, we're doing it, we're doing it. Do you want to start next to the rabbi? Yeah. And I'll go in the cell, and I'll just have a... Yeah, 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 yeah. 13, 13. 18. Just do one video. How will I start? Come, let's move up. down a little bit this way so there's room. Okay. And then Svi, you can stand next to you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Everything but my book. You, well, you, 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 you think I will be hungry.